I could have your attention, please. If I could have your attention. Um, good morning. Um, wanted to welcome all of you. I'm Gay Nord, the CEO for Methodist Hospital, and I'd like to thank you for joining us this morning for Methodist 50 year anniversary celebration. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Imagine a day 53 years ago in a field on the outskirts of San Antonio, a crowd gathered outside for the groundbreaking ceremony of the world's first nuclear age hospital. I'd like you all to join me in a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. So the, the, the smoke is a reenactment, um, the photo is real, so that's actually the photo um, from when the, the groundbreaking occurred. Um, and that was the official beginning of an exciting era for San Antonio and its healthcare industry. We're gathered today to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Methodist Hospital and the South Texas Medical Center. I'd like to introduce the Reverend Dr. Austin Frederick, Vice President of Pastoral Care for Mes Methodist Healthcare to offer our gratitude for the many blessings our hospital has experienced over 50 years. Good morning. Good morning. We are indeed grateful to God for your presence here this morning. Methodist Hospital began with a conversation with then Bishop A. Frank Smith and five civic leaders who we now affectionately refer to as the Five Oaks of San Antonio. Out of that conversation, the entire land area on which the medical center is located was donated by them. Then, as is oftentimes now, hospitals were built in relationship to religious organizations as an acknowledgement that one's faith, ever how that's expressed within one's life and or world, plays a vital role on one's journey towards healing and wholeness. It has been 50 years, and we celebrate the gift of a golden anniversary. Let us pray. Most gracious and eternal God, we give you thanks for the gift of gold in your creation and ministry. From sunrises to sunsets, to wheat fields to fields of flowers, from precious metals to golden anniversaries precious to us all. Help us to be ever mindful and grateful of the faithfulness of those who have gone on before us for our call into existence in serving humanity to honor you. For only through our faithfulness and the faithfulness of oh so many others, to these ends will we stay gold. In the name of the one true God, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Austin. We want to recognize some special guests who've joined us today. So when I call your name, if you could just wave. Um, for those, those of you who have not met, uh, haven't met you yet, Kevin Moriarty is our president and CEO of Methodist Healthcare Ministries. Kevin. Sam Hazen, president of operations for HCA. John Foster, president of the American Group for HCA. It's over here to our right. Blas Catalani, chairman of the Board of Governors for Methodist Healthcare. Paul Anderson, chairman of the Methodist Healthcare Community Board. And Scott Bryan, chairman of the Methodist Healthcare Ministries Board. We'd like to welcome you. In addition, we have In addition, we have many uh, members here from our community board. If you could raise your hand so that we can see you from our community board. The Methodist Healthcare Ministries Board and staff are also here, so if you could raise your hand. Thank you for being here today. We also have some of the past presidents of the Blue Bo Bluebird Auxiliary with us. If you could raise your hand. Very good. And again, we thank, thank all of you for being here. This is a very exciting day for us, and I'm also very excited to be able to um, introduce and welcome Bayer County Judge Nelson Wolf as our guest speaker this morning. So, Judge Wolf.
Well, what a great faith. In 1963, when Tom Frost and a number of other great leaders came forward and built this hospital in the middle of nowhere, who would have thought in 1963 that we would see what we see today uh, throughout this great medical center? I started in law school in 1963, vaguely remember the opening, and then going into the legislature in the 1970, and still beginning to see the growth of the institutions out here, and being able to play a role in the Appropriations Committee, and then in the Senate Finance Committee, uh, to begin funding a number of the schools associated with the medical school, the nursing school, the dental school, and began to really lay the groundwork for the great medical presence of the UT Health Science Center. And you see that in really uh, top-notch condition today with all the tremendous research that's going on today. And then that relationship with the Methodist Hospital and the extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary uh, method that came about when you formed a partnership with HCA and with the Methodist Healthcare Ministries. I was just speaking to Scott a while ago. I said, is there another model like this anywhere else in the United States? And he said, no, not like this. Where you take a private company and you have a, a nonprofit such as Methodist Healthcare Ministries and you have a 50-50% partnership and through that Methodist Healthcare Ministries, you plow tremendous amount of funds back into San Antonio, uh, supporting our great healthcare system uh, throughout our area. It's an extraordinary effort. Kevin Moriarty, when I was mayor of the city, he and I had a great time working together when he worked with the city, and then for him to come over and to uh, run the Methodist Healthcare Ministries. Um, you found a jewel of a person to do that, and one that I think has brought great credibility uh, to Methodist Healthcare Ministries. I've had four children. Uh, one of them was adopted. The other three were all born right here in the Methodist Hospital. I, I, <laughs> I have a, a dear friend and a former brother-in-law who is a Methodist minister and then was a chaplain here for a number of years till he retired, Charlie Rogers. And uh, he had a great faith and great faith in what this uh, wonderful hospital is doing. Uh, we continue today through the Bear County Hospital System doing business as University Hospital uh, to work with the Methodist system. They're in the throes now of another major step forward for the Methodist Hospital. And that's trying to integrate the pediatric care that is administered by the UT Health Science Center doctors, along with the private physicians here at Methodist Hospital. Uh, we will continue to do some of the pedi pediatric care at University Hospital, but I'm very supportive of this effort and hope that uh, in the next 60 days or so, I guess, Jamie, 60 <laughs> days or so, that you're able to come to an agreement with the UT Health Science Center to do that and bringing that related uh, research and clinical care and partners that we can develop with you to even expand the scope of the Methodist Hospital. I know that uh, Gay Nord and I took a trip to uh, Oklahoma City, and uh, that's where Methodist uh, operates the Children's Hospital in, in Oklahoma City in connection with the medical school there, and it's a great success there. And hopefully this will be a great success here in San Antonio. We all know what that first investment did for the city of San Antonio and did for our healthcare, healthcare industry. But today, from that small beginning in 1963, the biomedical field is the city's leading employer and economic driver. It has an impact of some 24.5 billion a year with 6.5 billion in wages and 141,251 employees. It's an extraordinary thing that's happening out here with some 33,000 net new jobs just over the past, past decade. But none of that would have been possible 
had there not been faith, particularly in the case of Methodists, the willingness to take risks, the support of the state, and the support of the Bear County Commissioners uh, to build the hospital that we have today, and then the expansion uh, which we're going through today. I do have a uh, resolution that I would like to present to, um, to Gay and, and, and to uh, Jamie Woloski. Um, whereas a half a century ago, Medical <coughs> Methodist Hospital opened San Antonio, Texas, in what is now the world-renowned South Texas. In 1956, a group of Five Oaks folks gave 200 acres for the development. Today, Methodist employs some 3,500 uh, people with an annual income of $185 million. Its mission is serving humanity to honor God, resulted in providing over $227 million in charity and uncompensated care just in 2000 alone. They've done a wonderful job, and it's on my pleasure on behalf of the Commissioner's Court uh, to present this to you as Methodist Hospital's 50th anniversary celebration day. Thank you, Judge Wolf. We appreciate the proclamation and certainly uh, your kind words and your support. Before we uh, proceed, I did want to recognize one more guest that we have here today. I think over to my left is Bishop Dorf. If you could maybe wave, wanted to, to welcome you. Um, our, our Methodist Bishop is, is with us today, so thank you so much for joining us. And now it's my pleasure to recognize someone who I work very closely with, um, who is a very important leader in the organization, and that's Dr. Richard Levine, our Chief of Staff for Methodist Hospital. Uh, when I was asked to speak about the hospital, I mused on the idea of Kevin Costner, who said, build it and they will come. And they did. And that field of dreams is very similar to the ranch that was out here prior to the development of this wonderful hospital. My perspective as a physician, and I'm not a politician, but I try to be a leader, as a physician is to look at the individuals that have contributed the significant amount of their life's worth to this hospital. That includes the nurses, the doctors, the volunteers, the people that clean the floors, the people that make our food, everyone, every individual in this hospital is important. And that's the way they are thought of by the leadership in this hospital. And that's what makes this hospital work. I've been, uh, I don't want to go back on myself, but I trained in New York. I'm a Yankee, <laughs> if that's okay with everybody. <laughs> and uh, as a Yankee, my perspective is different. Up there, the schools and the private hospitals work together. And if I had a choice, in my vision for this place in the future is to actually tear up Floyd Curl Drive and plant grass and put us on the campus of the university. That's my personal vision. I've been a professor at the university since 1981. I've been chief of staff at the Baptist Hospital. I might mention other competitive hospitals. And this is the hospital that I personally choose to bring my family to bring my patients, to bring my friends, because the quality of care in this Methodist hospital is the highest there is that I can find for, their, for the value of their time and effort by the doctors, the nurses, and all of the people here. So I'm humbled, I'm not honored. <laughs> I'm humbled more than honored to be a spokesperson for all the individuals that make up the pulse, the organs, the activity in this hospital. Thank you. Well, hello. hello. What a glorious day for this celebration. You know, um, I'm Jamie Wasilowski. Uh, it has been my sincere honor to be the president and CEO of the Methodist Healthcare System now for 
little over six years, and I really can't agree more with Dr. Levine on, on this particular issue. And Dr. Levine, as an example, has been practicing here for just about 32 years, and he is one of many great doctors. In fact, I would argue that the best doctors in this area are on staff at Methodist Hospital. And that's what makes Methodist Hospital so great. It's the people. The best doctors. <laughs> is like the best doctors like Dr. Levine and his colleagues are attracted to work with the best doctors. And HCA, uh, Dr. Frist once said, good people beget good people. And that is nowhere more true than at Methodist Hospital. The best doctors follow the best doctors, work the best doctors, and they demand the best nurses and the best staff and the best volunteers and technicians and everybody that we have working, working here at Methodist Hospital. So we have an awesome responsibility, but you should all be extremely proud of yourselves because it's the people that have made us the best. So give yourselves a round, round of applause. I am truly in awe of um, really the, the legacy of the leaders that started this hospital, you know, starting with so many people, but the United Methodist Church, uh, the Five Oaks, Mr. Frost, the city of San Antonio, our county uh, that really came here with a vision for a Methodist hospital that would not only be a Methodist hospital, but would be surrounded with enough land to create a major medical center someday. But the medical center started with this little hospital on the hill. Um, some of you remember it. I don't. <laughs> but I know many of you were here during that time. This little hospital started with 175 beds and 272 employees. It has now grown exponentially to nearly 900 beds and 3,500 employees. Um, you know, and that visionary spirit didn't stop there. That visionary spirit continued on. And about 20 years ago, John Hornbeek, I know he's out there someplace. John? John? John was the CEO of Methodist Hospital at that time. Uh, I'm proud to say that he's my predecessor as the CEO, President and CEO of the Methodist Healthcare System. But he really decided that uh, he needed to call the board together one morning on Saturday. And I've heard this story from many people how he brought him over to his house for coffee and nobody really knew exactly what John had on his mind. But John said that he, fe he feared that a single standalone hospital might struggle in the future. Uh, by itself without looking to expand and looking for a partner. And so a search began to become more than just Methodist Hospital. The search began to become Methodist Healthcare System and look for a partner. So in 1995, the Methodist Hospital became the Methodist Ho Healthcare System. It's a family of hospitals, as you all know, and it's half owned by HCA, Hospital Corporation of America, the largest and most successful hospital company in the United States, and a newly founded not-for-profit organization, the Methodist Healthcare Ministries. Now, the ministries and the Methodist Healthcare System share the same mission, serving humanity to honor God. And the ministries has become the single largest private provider of community health care in South Texas. Together, the Methodist Healthcare Ministries and the Methodist Healthcare System have provided millions and millions of dollars of care for those who really cannot afford it. Um, care including inpatient uh, services, emergency services, dental services, um, important surgeries that they couldn't afford, things of that nature. And I'm just proud to say to, to everyone that uh, it's been an honor to be here, to be part of this. I don't think there's a story greater than the story we have here anywhere in healthcare. You should all feel very proud today because together we have helped many, many people. We have saved many lives. So please celebrate to your heart extent today. Thank you so much.
Thank you, Jamie. Um, as you've heard today, just the idea of building a hospital on this land was a leap of faith. And like the past, Methodist Hospital, uh, can, Methodist hospital continues its plan to meet the community's needs um, for the future. We have exciting years ahead, ahead of us, um, lots of great plans, and I'm, I'm thrilled and certainly honored to be a part of this team um, and watch the hospital grow in the future. And speaking of team, I'd like to recognize some very special people who've de devoted nearly their entire career to Methodist Hospital. Our longest tenured employees are here with us today, um, and it's my honor to recognize them. Um, and that first employee is Ian Shawcross, who is right here on the front row. Ian is our directors of, Director of Facilities Management, and on, on October 4th, he'll actually celebrate 46 years with Methodist Hospital. Um, <laughs> and, and during Ian's tenure, um, he has ended up managing a hospital that has grown to well over a million square feet, if you can even imagine keeping up with that with more plan for the future. So Ian, we thank you for your dedication and commitment. Our second employee, uh, longest tenured employee, is Nancy Burrell, who is a nurse on Mother Baby. Nancy. <laughs> Nancy is one of our amazing nurses on Mother Baby and has been with us for 43 years. Um, and she says the biggest change she's seen, that there's no longer a father's waiting room, so no more <laughs> segregation. Um, the dads actually get to be part of the baby's birth. So Nancy, we appreciate all that you do. Thank you. Our next employee is Norbert Cantu. He's a surgical technologist. Norbert. Norbert has worked in the OR for 43 years and has watched the ORs grow from 7 to 36. So Norbert, we appreciate all that you do, your dedication and commitment. Thank you. And Janie Ochoa, Janie. Janie is our phlebotomy educator in the lab and has been part of the team for 42 years, starting out as a dietary aide. Janie, congratulations to you and thank you. And finally, rounding out our top five most tenured employees is Aurelia Martinez. Aurelia? Aurelia is, our, is a radiology clerk and has been here for over 42 years. She's seen radiology grow from two rooms to 28 rooms and has obviously seen a lot of change in radiology from a world of films and processors to now everything electronic and, and ar archived and packed. So Aurelia, we thank you for all that you've done. Congratulations to you. And from our medical staff, I want to introduce Dr. Robert Scholemer. Is Dr. Scholemer here? Yes, Dr. Scholemer. <laughs> Dr. Scholemer is an OB-GYN who began his practice here in 1971. We also have Dr. Vernon Benson, um, who could not be with us today. Um, and joined the medical staff that same year practicing internal medicine and was actually our first chief of staff when Methodist Stone Oak opened only a few years ago. Um, and finally, our amazing volunteers, our Bluebird Auxiliary, you see them here to my left, um, who exemplify who we were 50 years ago and continue to exemplify who we are today. Um, the Bluebirds, as we know, are such a special part of our organization and our team. Methodist Hospital in no way would be Methodist Hospital without our Bluebirds. And with us, we have four of our longest tenured Bluebirds. Um, they are Karen Patterson. Karen? Connie Benson, who couldn't join us today, Maxine Haas, Maxine, and Barbara Ringen, Barbara. We thank you all for being here today, and again, thank you for all that you do. 
We also have some other special guests, um, Alan and Sheila Hansen, the parents of San Antonio's first quadruplets. Are they here? Are they here? Brooke Hansen, um, Senator Donna Campbell's office, uh, excuse me, Brooke Hansen, um, baby number two of the quadruplets. Is Brooke here? They're over in Central Okay. We also have with us Vanessa Benavidi, Senator Donna Campbell's office. Vanessa, there she is back here. And as Jamie said earlier, I know John Hornbeek is somewhere out there in, in the sea of people. So John, our former CEO of Methodist and Method, Hos, Methodist Hospital and Methodist Healthcare. We also have Tom Frost um, was on the board and instrumental in actually building our hospital. So is Tom, there he is right in front of me. Tom, welcome. And Marjorie Hardy, our first uh, Bluebird president. Marjorie, thank you for being here. We also have Dr. Pridgen. Um, Dr. Pridgen, thank you for being here and his daughter Gay. Dr. Pridgen actually performed the first surgery at Methodist Hospital and was the chief of staff in 1968. Uh, and not only that, Gay Swanson, to, his, to my left and, and to his right, was the first president of the Blue Jay Volunteers. So. So uh, amazing to think about those who helped mold who we are today, and um, we thank all of you for being here. Um, it, it's it's uh, certainly an honor to have you here with us. So the moment that everyone's been waiting for, we're going to um, open the time capsule, and we're actually going to have to head over to the, the lobby of the South Tower, but I think it will be televised. Um, and so we'll head over that way if I could have Jamie, uh, Ian, um, Karen Patterson, and Dr. Scholemer, if you could come up front and join us. this way. Did you have that thing memorized, Ian? Ah, it's open. Okay, can you guys hear me? Oh, wait. Can y'all hear me? No? Yes, there we go. Okay. So what you don't know is this was actually buried in cement um, in the South Tower, and so that we had to jackhammer it out, and Ian's got the, the um, combination down. So let's see what we've got. We have an original photo of the hospital. You guys all recognize this, yes? We have the Adam newsletter, uh, MRI taking medicine where it's never gone before. This is called the Adam. This was the employee newsletter. 
for the nuclear age hospital. We have the Bluebird Auxiliary um, Directory with some secret information in here, it looks like. <laughs> so we'll chat later. We have Vital Signs, uh, which was the Methodist Hospital Foundation. It looks like there are some drawings on front for future growth. No little animals have jumped out yet, so that's good. <laughs> um, we have the Methodist Hospital Employee Manual. So now it's online, right? A lot and a lot larger, yes. No, no good wine. Yeah, sorry, Jamie. No Pinot Noir. Um, let's see. We have Nursing in the Next Quarter Century. Um, by Ann Hillstad, Hillstad um, Assistant Administrator for Patient Care Services, so a paper that was written. We also have Alpha 25th Anniversary Commemorative Issue for Methodist Hospital with some uh, really neat photos on the front, probably of some familiar faces there. And we have something very heavy. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> there is... A gorgeous paperweight um, with an atom on the bottom. It was the Methodist Hospital Foundation. Um, anyway, so you can see that. Isn't that gorgeous. And I think that I think that's it. So um, we will have these items on display certainly for you to look at um, at a later date. But um, truth be told, we were very nervous about the time capsule because we did not, we could not find anyone who really knew what was in it. I think we even asked John Hornbeek. Um, ne ne never, nevertheless, um, we did open it in advance, um, and I will tell you that what was actually in it, we just reenacted everything that was truly in it, but I wanted to show you what the items really looked like when we opened it, and so lessons learned in time capsule preservation. <laughs> so for the next time around, we obviously will seal it up better. The items were, um, you can see, are not really intact, and they're honestly still a little wet. So um, anyway, but these, are, these were the actual items that were in the time capsule. So very, very exciting. That's right. We have a plan for the next time around. So that concludes what we've all been waiting for, the opening of the time capsule. Very exciting. Again, we'll have all the items on display, and we will ultimately have them permanently on display um, in the hallway and framed. And I'd like to thank you all for joining us for this very, this is a very special day for us and for all of us, really. Um, you're welcome to join us in the, the main central lobby um, for cake. Um, we don't have any candles on our cake, unfortunately. Um, but I do want to wish us happy 50th birthday and hope the next 50 years are just as successful and prosperous as the last. So thank you again.